श्री गुरु चरण कमल भजम श्री गुरु चरण कमल भजम श्री गुरु चरण कमल भजम गुरु कृपा बिना In the Vedic literature known as the Srimad Bhagavatam, a great personality is described. His name is Maharaj Parikit, the great king and grandson of the famous Pandava brothers. This king, Parikit Maharaj, was the emperor of the entire world. And being a very heroic and powerful king, he used to travel throughout the world to see that justice was upheld and sins were curbed down. Once, during his tour of the world, he came upon a very unfortunate situation. He saw a man with a sword in his hand cutting down the legs of a bull. And the bull was only standing on one leg the other three having been broken and cut down. And a cow was standing next to this bull, and the cow was crying. This man with the sword, who was performing such a horrible act, was the personality of Kali, the symbol of irreligion for this age. This age is described as Kali Yuga, the age of quarrel and hypocrisy. In an age like this, there are so many unfortunate conditions. People are very short-lived. They're always forgetful. They're misguided, uh, unfortunate and their minds are always disturbed. The poor bull and cow were suffering very much. So this bull is the symbol of religion. The bull is called Dharma or religion. And what are the principles of religion? These principles of religion are symbolized by the four legs of the bull. The first is austerity. The second is mercy. The third is cleanliness. And the fourth is truthfulness. These four principles of religion are the basis of a righteous civilization. But in the Kali Yuga, we find that these four principles are becoming more and more non-existent. Formerly, in previous history, for example, in the Satya Yuga, all of these principles of religion were intact. But now in the Kali Yuga, there is no more austerity. There is no more mercy. There is no more cleanliness. The only leg of the bull which is left standing is truthfulness. And even truthfulness is fast disappearing. We find in this age so many sinful activities are going on. Why? Because people 
do not know what the goal of life is. A man today, even he goes through the highest degree of education, he may not know who he is. We ask this question of many intelligent, educated people. Who are you? And they do not know what is the answer. Who are you? What would you answer? I'm a school teacher. All right. I am Sahib Naidu. If we ask you this question, who are you? What is your answer? Well, I am a human being, sir. Could you tell us who are you? I am a lady. Sorry, I've got no description. You have no description, but I see you sitting there. Can't you tell us something about yourself? Nothing. No. Could, could you tell us if we ask this question, who are you? What would you answer? I'd say I'm still trying to find out. That's a very truthful answer. And they do not know what is the answer. They only describe their bodies, but they do not know about the soul or the atma within. When a man does not know about his soul, then he thinks he is his body. And to gratify this body is the main goal of life. And so he engages in so many activities meant for bringing temporary pleasure to this body. But because these activities are against the guidance and advice of scripture or Shastra, he commits so many different sins. The Vedas and other genuine scriptures of the world are meant to give us guidance how to lead a godly life. For by leading a godly life, we can come out of this temporary world of suffering, of birth and death, and return back to our home, back to Godhead. For this purpose, the Vedic literatures recommend the principle of austerity. Austerity is essential for one who wants to become advanced in spiritual life. Austerity uh, means to voluntarily uh, give up those things which uh, are not advantageous for one's spiritual advancement. There are many types of austerity, but generally these austerities uh, are taught from or one's childhood. Therefore, you'll find that the children who are properly trained in the principles of religion, they grow up very, very nicely. Uh, austerity is spoiled by pride. Nowadays, even a pauper or a poor man is proud of his penny. Everyone is very much proud. Uh, this is one of the qualities that we find, that people uh, don't have any austerity or humility. Uh, pride cometh before the fall, is the saying. A man who is too much proud, he will be cut down. Mm. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has recommended, Trinara peace in HNO, Tarora peace in Hishnina, Amane na mana deina, Kirtanya sadahari. That one has to be more humble than a blade of grass if one wants to make advancement in spiritual life. A blade of grass is always being trampled upon. But still, it does not protest. And similarly, a man has to be very, very humble because in this day and age, 
so many difficulties will befall you. There will be so much uh, ridicule, especially if you want to be uh, a devotee of God in this day and age, because people are irreligious, uh, a devotee who is normally glorified, he may be ridiculed. Just see Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and they crucified him. But he's so humble and tolerant that he says, Father, forgive them. Similarly, the great Vaishnav Saint Haridas Thakur traveled through 23 villages being beaten and flogged because he was chanting the holy name. He was born a Muslim, but he was chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. And so, so many people beat him, telling him, stop this chanting. Of course, these are very extreme examples. But nevertheless, a devotee of God has to be very humble and tolerant. Uh, pride, therefore, is an obstacle in spiritual life. And we find that especially an intoxicated person becomes falsely proud. When a man becomes drunk, he begins to brag very loudly because he is not within his correct uh, senses. Actually, all scriptures of the world advise that one should not waste their life and waste their money drinking liquor or alcohol or taking any type of intoxicants. A real government should control this intoxication because we find that when the citizens take intoxication, they don't want to work. A man takes whatever money his family has and instead of properly caring for his wife and children, he goes to the liquor shop, drinks up all of the value of the money. Even his poor wife and children may be starving to death. He will not care. And what to speak of spiritual life. For that, he has no interest. During the time of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there were two drunkards, Jagai and Madai. Not only were they drunkards, they were meat eaters, woman hunters, and addicted to all bad habits. When the incarnation of Godhead, Lord Nityananda Prabhu, approached them, please chant Hare Krishna. And when Haridas Thakur, the great saint, approached them to please chant, instead of chanting, they took the earthen jug used for holding the liquor and threw it on the two preachers, breaking it on their head. So just understand that someone who's very intoxicated, he doesn't know about what is to be done and what is not to be done. Perhaps you are familiar with the story of the two fallen demigods, the sons of Kuvera, Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva. These two boys, being the sons of very great person, Kuvera, the treasurer of the demigods, they were drinking and became intoxicated and were bathing uh, completely naked with women. When the great personality, Narad Muni came by them and they were so intoxicated they did not even cover their bodies. So of course you know they were condemned to take their birth as trees by Narad Muni. But of course when a saintly person curses someone it is also a blessing in disguise. So the two boys took their birth as two trees the Yamalajun trees in the courtyard of Lord Krishna at Nanda Maharaja's place in Vrindavan. So you all know how one day Mother Yasoda bound up Krishna with a rope and put the rope on the mortar, the grinding mortar. Krishna then began to crawl on the floor 
And so he pulled the mortar between the two t trees and knocked the trees over. And then the two demigods again came to their original body. And this time they were in full consciousness and they realized what a blessing had come on account of the curse of Narad Muni. So they offered their obeisances, they circumambulated Krishna and they, uh, and they became great devotees of the Lord. In any case, intoxication is a horrible thing. Uh, we find that now, today, more and more people are addicted to intoxication. Uh, this intoxication I was reading today in the local newspaper uh, edition, that a, a book has just been written by the uh, relatives of the famous rock and roll singer Elvis Presley. You see? And uh, there in this book, they have said that Elvis Presley died because he was a drug addict. So Elvis Presley was worshipped by millions and millions of people. He's so famous that the house where he was living before he died, he, uh, people come from Europe and other places in the world to see this house. Not only they come to see this house, but one square inch of land in this house, in this backyard of his house, is being sold for $10,000 a square inch. People are so mad after this man. And what was this man? A drug addict. Was it? Drug addict. So many famous people are either drunkards, drug addicts, everyone is drinking nowadays. It is a regular thing. You see? But drinking means that at night you go to sleep late and in the morning, instead of waking up early in the morning to chant Hare Krishna on the Japa beats, you see? instead of getting up, we call it Brahma Muhurta. Brahma Muhurta means the hour and a half before the sun rises. At that time, uh, the mind is very peaceful, just like a lake, a body of water is very peaceful early in the morning because there's no fish or other things moving, everything's sleeping. So similarly, one and a half hours before sunrise, everybody's still sleeping. And because it's dark, you don't get distracted by all the different sights around you. And that is the best time for spiritual life. This is when it is best to chant on the Japa beads, the Hare Krishna mantra. Therefore, we go to the temple at that time for attending the Mangal Arti ceremony of the Krishna deity. Mangal means auspicious. So, if one is drunk or taking other types of intoxication, what is the question of his getting up early in the morning? He cannot do it. He has no interest in spiritual life. Not only in no interest in spiritual life, but his daily activities in material life are also affected. He becomes practically worthless. So how to overcome these different problems like drinking or drug addiction? Uh, you have to replace this activity with something better. What is that something better? The Hare Krishna mantra. If you begin to chant Hare Krishna, gradually you'll give up this bad drinking habit. Krishna's name will give you the strength to overcome your habit or your addiction. You would be surprised, but people are very much addicted to so many different things. Even uh, coffee, which has some caffeine in it, if a man tries to give it up, it is very difficult. So how to give up so many types of intoxications? Start to chant Hare Krishna. Even one round a day will make it easy to give it up one day.
actually by chanting I, I found out there was there was a greater pleasure in chanting the Lord's name than in taking than in drinking liquor I found out that there is nothing in liquor people think there is a lot of happiness in liquor but I am trying to tell them that once they think there is happiness but once you finish a bottle of whiskey there is nothing in it what enjoyment do you get it is only a temporary pleasure and eventually it's not a pleasure so if you take up to this chanting you will automatically find out that you don't have to try to give up any habits it will automatically go away if you try to give up a habit it won't go away but if you chant Hare Krishna then it will automatically go away you will realize within that, that there is a higher pleasure higher pleasure than liquor so eventually I gave up liquor I didn't have to make any efforts at all it just went away Krishna is so merciful that once I started chanting his name he said that there is nothing in liquor and my tongue absolutely rejected liquor so I was able to give up liquor immediately so this is the first principle austerity one has to be austere. Second principle, uh, mercy. <clears throat> mercy is also a principle that is very rarely found nowadays. You see? Because due to intoxications, a man will do so many horrible things. When someone is intoxicated, they're even able to go and kill their relatives. That has happened. We have seen so many reports in the newspapers of people under the influence of intoxication that killed their own relatives. And another thing which is very much uh, causing lack of mercy or loss of mercy is animal killing. Actually, uh, in all the scriptures of the world, there is an advice not to kill animals. Of course, we know in the Bible it says, Thou shalt not kill. So, uh, this thou shalt not kill means not to kill any animals at all. But unfortunately, people are taking it to mean that you should only not kill human beings. But actually, every type of animal, everything has the soul inside. So only God can give life, therefore only God should be able to take life. Actually, even a plant, even a potato, there's a reaction. But if you offer this potato by cooking it nicely and offering it to Krishna, then Krishna takes the reaction. And Krishna, because he is God, there's no reaction. Therefore, the way to be able to eat, you only eat Krishna Prashad foodstuffs offered to God. Of course, now that you're hearing this, you may say, very good. Now I know Swamiji has told us the secret, so I'll go out and kill a nice chicken and offer it to Lord Krishna. No. Because Krishna says, patram pushpan palantoyam. He says, you can offer me a leaf a flower, some fruit or water. There are certain things which Krishna eats, but Krishna does not eat chicken. We learned a very interesting fact. Did you know that Fiji is the number one nation in the world per person for eating poultry, chickens? Fiji citizens eat more chickens per person than any other citizens of any other country of the world. We are engaged in hatching their old chicks for distribution to the farmers. The farmers use these chickens for uh, meat and some for laying. Close to two million chickens are sold through the butchers and uh, another million uh, uh, privately throughout Fiji. We produce the baby chicks, so we put the eggs in the machine for 21 days and this is the final result. Congratulations, you're all going to hell. Yes, I don't say you're going to hell. That is stated in the Bible, that is stated in the Vedas, and that is stated everywhere else. That when you kill an animal, then that animal will have to kill you. In the Vedas, there is a mention that there are two types of paths recommended, Pagvitri Marg 
and the Vitri Mark. Pavitri Mark means those persons who are interested in enjoying life. So for such persons, for example, who want to eat animals or eat meat, the Vedas recommend, yes, you can eat meat, but only on one day of the month. And on that day, you have to take the animal and kill it at a certain time and offer it to Goddess Kali. And while you offer it, there's a special mantra to mention. And what is that mantra translated to say? My dear animal, today I am taking your life and offering it to Goddess Kali. And next time, in my next life, you can kill me and offer me to Goddess Kali. So gradually, when an intelligent man says this prayer enough time, he wakes up and he thinks, what am I doing? Did you know that if you kill a cow, which is the most sacred animal, that for every hair on the body of that cow, you have to take your birth and be killed that many thousands of times. Now who knows this? Due to poor information, people are doing so many sinful things. One man here told us that he was a Brahmin, but his Pandaji, his teacher told him, yes, you can eat meat because Fiji Brahmins, they're allowed to eat meat. Yes, I do that. What is your name? I am a Pandit and my Brahmin. और धर्म के हिसाब से आपके खाने के अलावा है। वैसे तो ब्राह्मणों को खाना नहीं चाहिए पर हम लोग यहाँ पर फिजी में हैं तो हम लोग का सौभाग्य है कि हम लोग का खाना पड़ता है। आधान बात। These things are going on. Actually, there is no permission given at all for killing the cow. None whatsoever. You can never kill the cow because the cow is a mother. The mother is giving milk. The cow is giving milk. Just imagine, would you kill your own mother? But we're killing the cow all over the world, people are killing the cow. Therefore, what kind of person kills his own mother? Someone who has no mercy at all. This is the point. Someone who has no mercy at all. The cow is so beneficial. She gives her milk. The cow dung, or the uh, stool of the cow, is sometimes used uh, in India, for example, for fuel, for cooking. They dry it on the wall, make it dry, and they use it just like wood. It burns very nice fire. And the cow urine is used for curing certain diseases. Cow dung is so nice, if you spread it on the floor, no fly will land on it. It is so clean and antiseptic. And it's cool in the summer and warm in the winter on the floor and very pure. The cow uh, horns are used for bugling. Hmm? The cow uh, skin, after the cow dies, naturally, the skin can be used for shoes and other things. So just see how nice the cow is. Living or dead, she's always giving service. And how do we reward her for her service? Take the milk from her, and as soon as she stops giving milk, kill her. Now just see, what is this civilization? This cow-killing civilization. The government is opening slaughterhouses. You see? Opening slaughterhouses. The government should be protecting the cows. The cow can give milk, but why not take the milk? Why kill the cow and drink blood? Because milk is the blood transformed. Once you kill the cow, that's it. You can't do any more with her. But if you keep taking milk, then you keep getting benefit. And she'll die naturally one day. Then you can eat her if you have to eat meat. But why kill? So one who kills the cow or one who eats meat, you see, he's breaking the principles of religion. Do you eat meat? Yes, I do. Yeah, I'm allowed to eat meat. You are a Christian? Yeah. If it's not against, then what you mean by thou shall not kill? Thank you. Aap Gosh Mashri khata hai? Oh, khata hai. Aap ke dharam mein kya bale? Gosh Mashri khai ka laud hai? Oh, khai ka laud hai, mokhi hai toh.
कौन था नाम आपके हिंदुस्तानी ब्राह्मण जात ब्राह्मण जात खाता है जो यू नो ऊंची हम लोग कोई रोक नहीं है ना एनी टाइम के नीचे बट धर्म के हिसाब से ओके सके खावे और कोई रोक नहीं है थैंक यू आप गोश्त मछली खाता है जी हम लोग खाते हैं कौन धर्म आपके जी आपके धर्म कौन साउथ इंडियन आपके धर्म में है कि आप गोश्त मछली से खावे जी हाँ तो बोला जाए कि दाव शेल नोट की ना बोले क्योंकि जान नहीं मारना चाहिए तो आप क्या खाता Thank you. Now, do you eat meat? Yes, I eat a lot of meat. Now, what uh, does it allow you in your religious? Is it not against the principle of your religious to eat meat? Then nothing against my religion because God gave us meat to eat. It, do you mean to say that you believe in Christianity? I am a Christian. Do you? Can you explain us the meaning of "Thou shall not kill"? Thou shall not kill. That's a big question, very big question. You see, he's breaking the principles of religion. And therefore, he cannot understand God. He cannot become a devotee of God. People tell me, oh, I am a devotee of Krishna. And I say, do you eat meat? They say, certainly. I say, then you're not a devotee of Krishna. Because Krishna says that whatever you eat, yajnashashtashino shanto, munchanti sarva kilbishai, bunjati te to gam papa, ye pachanti at prakarana. Those who offer food, uh, uh, those who uh, offer, those who eat food without offering it first in sacrifice to Krishna, yajna shishna, without offering the food first to Krishna, they eat only sin. So how can you say you're a devotee of Krishna? Actually, you ought to have to offer your food to God. Oh. Because every living entity, anad bhavanti bhutani parjanya ranasam bhavaha, yajna bhavati parjanyo, yajna karma samud bhavaha. All living entities are existing on food grains. And food grains come from rain. And rain comes from jagya. Jagya means sacrifice. Even you want to eat meat, the animals have to be given grains. The grains need water, and water comes from demigods. And the demigods, they only give water if there's jagya. Therefore, sometimes there's a big drought, just like here in Lotaka. There was a big drought for a long time now. Because there's no more sacrifice. In this day and age, people are not offering sacrifice to Krishna. Therefore, there will be no rain. At the end of Kali Yuga, there will be clouds in the sky, but there'll be no rain. There'll be trees, but no flower and fruits. Nothing will grow out of the ground, and the only thing left to eat will be that one will eat one's own children. That is mentioned in the Vedas, if for the end of Kali Yuga. So how to avoid this? You have to do sacrifice. And what is the sacrifice for Kali Yuga? The Sankirtan Jagya. The chanting of God's name, Hare Krishna Mantra. One who chants the Hare Krishna Mantra will find no shortage, no scarcity at all. There's so much nice food to eat. Anyone who comes to our Sunday love feast will tell you how nice the food that we cook and offer to Krishna tastes. At home, you also you cooking vegetarian. So what is different? Taste. Oh, this uh, this is uh, Lord Krishna's feast. I never forget this taste because this is one of the tastiest food I have found on Sunday. And this food made in at home is not much tastier than what I am getting here. This is one of the tastiest, and uh, I'm telling this frankly because this is seated to the Lord Krishna. How you like this prasad? I've just tasted nothing better than this. Very what? tasty. Well, why is this? It's the same thing, same thing you're cooking at home. Puri, rice, curry, dal, everything you're cooking at home, same thing. But why you like this more? Because it's a Krishna prasadam. <laughs> this is the answer. I think because it's a prasadam directly given from Krishna, that's why it's very tasty. You never had prasad like this? No. Anywhere? Never tastier than this. <laughs> because this is offered to Lord Krishna first. 
Lord Krishna's foods are always very tasty. Yeah. Yeah. So after offering this prasad to Krishna, when we take it, it purifies all our senses. And I have tried this at home and it's very beneficial. I like it. We get so much of happiness, immense happiness. I like so much, eh? Very tasty. Extremely tasty. <laughs> <laughs> People admit that there's nothing like Krishna Prashanam. Actually, even those people who are vegetarians, they also say there's a difference in Krishna Prashanam. What is that difference? Bhakti. The devotees of Krishna, they love Krishna. So when they cook that food, they offer it to Krishna first. Therefore, it is not vegetarian. We are not vegetarians. We are Krishnatarians. We only eat food offered to Krishna first. So one who learns to control his tongue by eating Krishna Prashadam and chanting Hare Krishna Mantra, he will be very merciful. Austerity, mercy, and next, cleanliness. Cleanliness, it is said, is next to godliness. People think that cleanliness means to scrub your body very nice with soap. That is only half of the job. The other job is you have to scrub your heart. Chaito darpana majanam. How do you scrub your heart? You have to scrub your heart with param vijayate. See Krishna Sankirtanam. By chanting the holy name of God, your heart will become clean. Then you'll be clean inside and clean outside. This is Brahminical living. Brahmin means clean. But Brahminal, Brahminical life is not restricted simply to someone who wears a thread around his body or whose father is a Brahmin. Anyone can become a Brahmin if he learns the principles of religion. If he becomes austere, if he becomes austere, if he becomes merciful, if he becomes clean, and if he becomes truthful, then he becomes a qualified Brahmin. It doesn't matter what your birth is. Krishna consciousness means to become a Brahmin. And Krishna consciousness is open to all people of the world, irrespective of what their religion is. Because we are not teaching some dogma of some faith. This is the principles of religion. This is true for all people. Whether you call yourself a Christian, a Muslim, a Hindu, or a Jew, these principles of austerity, Mercy, cleanliness, and truthfulness, they are the principles for all faiths and all religions and all people. Unfortunately, we find very few people nowadays following these principles. Cleanliness, cleanliness is destroyed by illicit sex life. Because when one has too much sex life, not only does his body become unclean, but his mind also becomes unclean. You'll find in this day and age, due to so many sins, people are suffering so much. You look at a man's face nowadays, it's full of anxiety and worry. The face is said to be the index of the mind. People are in complete anxiety. The father uh, has to work somewhere else, where he can't even live with his son anymore. The wife or husband are sometimes separated also due to work. Nowadays, even the family can't stay together. And divorce is increasing at the rate that nearly 50% of all marriages are ending in divorce. So much illicit sex going on. So much prostitution going on. A prostitution means that the mind becomes very contaminated and unclean. What to speak of the body? You'll be amazed to know that in one of the major cities in the United States, Atlanta, Georgia, one out of every six people has venereal disease. One out of every six. So much prostitution and illicit sex life going on. Therefore, the Vedas enjoin that men and women should be properly married. A girl should be married by the age of 16, 17 years of age. 
and a boy should be married by the age of 24. If this was followed, it would stop this illicit sex. Therefore, sacred marriage is recommended. As we do in our temples, we perform the marriage ceremony in front of the deity of Krishna because this is a sacred vow which can never be broken. There's no question of divorce in Krishna consciousness. Anyone who gets married as a devotee will never get a divorce because the marriage is not material thing. It is a spiritual thing. Why do husband and wife stay together? Not just for some temporary pleasure of the body, but to help each other advance in spiritual life. It is the duty of the husband to make his wife a devotee of Krishna and his children a devotee of Krishna. It is the duty of the wife to help the husband and children to become Krishna conscious, otherwise they are not doing their duty. It is said, Guru Nashashat, Sajano Nashashat, Pita Nashashat, Janani Nashashat, Devi Nashashat, Napita Nashashat, Anyone who calls himself a husband, a wife, a father, a mother, if he cannot save his family members from the repeated cycle of birth and death, he has no business being a father, a mother, husband, or wife. So this is a big responsibility, Krishna conscious married life. Unfortunately, nowadays, men and women get married simply for the attraction of the body. And when old age comes and the body becomes wrinkled and ugly, then they lose attraction and they get divorced and they look for other husband or other wife. In fact, nowadays, people don't even bother getting married. They just live together and have illicit sex life. And then when they get tired, they go somewhere else. And as a result, so many children without father or mother. Now you'll be surprised to know in America, more than one million abortions are performed every year. Abortion, what does abortion mean? The baby is in the womb. As soon as the baby is there, as soon as the baby is growing, it means the atma, the soul is there. And they're killing the baby in the womb. Mothers are killing their own children. This is Kali Yuga. This is Kali Yuga. And what will be the result? That woman who killed her child, that husband who told the wife to kill the child, in their next lifetime, they will have to take their birth in the womb and they will have to have, be aborted also. This is karma. Now who knows these things? There's no education about this. Therefore, our Krishna consciousness movement is the most necessary uh, movement that this country can have. Because Krishna consciousness is teaching these real principles of religion by which people can make their life happy and successful. Without Krishna consciousness, a man is committing so many sinful activities that will cause him to suffer not only in this lifetime, but for lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Austerity, mercy, cleanliness, these are no more existing nowadays amongst the common man. And the last thing, truthfulness. The bull of religion, Dharma, he's standing on this one leg, but it's shaking now. What is that one leg? Truthfulness. Why is it shaking? Due to gambling and lying propaganda and false currency notes. These are all different types of untruthfulness. First thing, gambling, because gambling means speculating. Speculating isn't truth. You go to the gambling parlor and you guess, I will bet on this horse, and you waste your money. So many people wasting so much money, and they're not making any money, but still they go on gambling, and playing so many games, pool games, and other games like this. I can't say how many people are winning, how many are losing. One day loser, one day winner. Today one wins, tomorrow that means he's losing again. Once you get the habit, it can't leave it. No idea, nobody knows who is going to win. Nobody can know that uh, he's winning there. 
just uh, throw the money just like throwing in the water. If it revenge, that means okay. Otherwise, no use. If people like to pass this time, enjoy the life, that's only it. Spoiling their life. Human life is meant for God consciousness for chanting the glories of Krishna, not for wasting your time betting on the horses in Australia or shooting pool. And what to speak of business speculations? The whole business of stock market is speculating. It is gambling. Gambling means you take your hard-earned money and you risk it for no reason. And you may lose everything. People lose big fortunes. They go to Las Vegas. You may have heard of Las Vegas in America. They spend millions of dollars gambling their money away. So foolish. And lying propaganda. This is another way of being untruthful. Just like there's a cigarette says, it's called cool cigarettes. Is that available in Fiji? It is available. Well, you'll, maybe you have seen that they have an advertisement and in the advertisement, it shows someone with a cigarette, the cool cigarette in their mouth, and the advertisement says, smoke cool. Now, how can smoke be cool? Smoke means there's fire. How fire can be cool? This means no truthfulness. They're trying to cover up the fact that that cigarette is burning. And they're saying it's cool. They have so carefully used the title cool for the name of the cigarette. And all the advertisements that are going on all over the billboards, they're all lying in one way or another, misrepresenting the truth. What to speak of the currency notes. Formally, a government could not issue a note unless there was an equal amount of gold to back up the currency. Now what happens? The government is printing so many notes and there's no gold behind it. False gold. It's not there at all. It's just paper money. And therefore you have inflation. Terrible inflation problem all over the world. Therefore, even this last leg of the bull is about to collapse. What is the only thing that can save the world today? Krishna consciousness. Therefore, we are requesting everyone, everyone, Krishna consciousness is necessary for you if you want to be happy. It is not difficult. It begins by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. When you begin to chant Hare Krishna, you get a higher taste. You get a strength of mind and a strength of determination, which keeps you Krishna conscious more and more and more. We are requesting all the people of Fiji, that they take this Krishna consciousness movement as part of their everyday life. You can become Krishna conscious at home. It is not difficult. You have to practice austerity. That is the first principle. Wake up early and chant Hare Krishna. And give up all kinds of pride and intoxication. Practice mercy by giving up meat-eating, and fish-eating, and egg-eating, and eat nice Krishna prasadam. Uh, practice cleanliness by being married, and have sex life for having nice Krishna conscious children, who will be a credit to you, and a credit to your family, and a credit to your whole nation. And be very truthful. Don't engage in any kind of gambling activities or speculation. In this way, in this very lifetime, you can become the happiest man in the world. You can become fully joyful, fully blissful, and you can have all the benefits of a good life now, and in your next lifetime, you can go back to home, back to Godhead. Hare Krishna. Jai.